Afternoon everybody, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review. Here today is the Renault R25 for the 2005 Formula 1 World Championship and in the car is Fernando Alonso. And this is basically part two of my three part series of Renaults that I'm reviewing. I've already done the R24, uh, today is the R25 and after this will be the R26, so we'll get into that order there. Um, so yeah, the uh, Renault team went into 2005 with... Uh, High expectations after what was a relatively successful yet disappointing 2004 season. They went into 2005 with the same principle for their R25 car, copying the uh, curvy side pods, the uh, the uh, the gills on the rear bodywork, the narrow nose, the uh, extended rear wing, and it was a very similar car in appearance, although a much more chunky looking car, I must say. It's, it looked... Uh, overall it looked very, relatively the same but it was a much more chunky looking machine probably to do with the uh, the rules of that year um, with the front wing being higher the rear wing being made uh, to be made further forward and uh, the diffuser as well having reconfigured as well so it's a shorter wheelbase car which sort of give it a, uh, a bit of a more bulkier look but the car was fast immediately on uh, on release it was uh, the first uh, first winner of the 2005 season but it was Fizzy Keller who put the uh, car on pole and took victory in Australia that year um, which was a lot of surprise to a lot of people including myself but it was sort of a false dawn for Fizzy Keller that year as he spent the rest of the season struggling with uh, crashes and just being off the pace but uh, Alonso took the mantle and took the lead of the team and won seven races throughout the season including the uh, pretty amazing uh, San Marino Grand Prix where he held off Michael Schumacher for pretty much the last half of the race winning the race by a mere car length and it was a pretty uh, good uh, race too although ITV at the time fucked up by uh, going to an advert break on the last lap um, there you go uh, or at least returning from the advert break on the last lap which uh, pissed a lot of people off but there we go so yeah seven wins throughout the season uh, can't remember which ones exactly because it's a bit of a vague season it was a funny season as well because of the funny rules that year you had tyres that had to last the full race, uh, full race distance and were not allowed to be changed so you had a pit stop where it's just being refuelled and then you had 20 blokes sort of sat around the car just sort of sat on their knees uh, looking at the car and then letting it go it was I mean, if you look at it now, it's sort of comical how it all panned out, and it's sort of a rule that uh, bit the FIA in the backside going into the US Grand Prix. Um, more about that later on, but uh, yeah, it was a funny season with silly rules and uh, yeah, a lot of controversy that year surrounding it. Not a lot of controversy surrounding the Renault team, at least not on the top of my head. The team had a pretty successful season. They had pretty much on an unchallenged season um, although it was McLaren who took the challenge to Renault throughout the season um, but McLaren that year were although on the upper hand or or, or, or up uh, re, well, basically building their uh, competitiveness backing up, uh, back up um, struggled throughout the season they were either winning races or falling off the road or breaking down it was an unreliable season for McLaren that year but uh, when they were on the pace they gave Renault a good old uh, a good challenge and uh, it's a shame that the championship didn't go down to the wire, but uh, there we go, that's uh, how things pan out. The R25 was definitely a step in the right direction, and it uh, was the last of the V10 Formula 1 cars as well, the last V10 Formula 1 car to win the championship, uh, or at least not the last V10 car, because the Toro Rosso took that in 2006, but this is the last Toro, uh, V10 powered car to win the world championship. Uh, as Formula 1 went on to v V8s in 2006, so it's the last 3 litre V10 uh, championship winning car and uh, it's a good way of uh, ending it after six years of Ferrari domination um, Renault you know, made Formula 1 look great again although Formula 1 was in a bit of a spiral that year um, so yeah I'm sort of waffling on a bit about the car um, or about the season it was a very, a very like I said it was a, a funny season it was uh, like I said the funny rules funny races yes yeah, some funny circuits as well we had uh, East, uh, Istanbul added to the calendar. I think there was, a, was there another one added in 2005? I can't remember. At Istanbul. Um, can't remember. Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, Istanbul's gone now, so that's uh, not a big issue there. Um, but on to the model itself. I will come back to the car later on because it, uh, I'm just sort of remembering what I'm doing. Uh, so if we just zoom in a bit here. I've changed the background as well to a, a white pillowcase instead of the uh, blue base because the <laughs> blue car doesn't look very good on a blue background. So, um, have a look around here and also I've got 
lighting, so it's, it's not actually directed on the car, so it's not a, <laughs> a bit of a problem there. So if I move the light a bit closer, and also turn it on, which may help, might be able to do this a bit better. So I'm doing that one-handed. No, it's not doing very well. Oh well, if I hang it that way, or stand it there, you can actually see the light. There we go, we've got some light on the car. Right, so there we go, it's a Mattel model, and it's uh, illuminated a bit better as well, and I can just zoom out a bit more. And it's a very large, well I say large car, it's a 118th scale, but it's a quite a chunky car compared to the R24, which uh, looked very streamlined, and uh, very aerodynamic. This car is the same sort of thing, same concept. It just... Uh, Sorry, I'm still playing with the bloody light, it keeps falling over. It's one of those lights that doesn't want to do what it's fucking told to do. Oh, well, if I leave it there, you can, you can see what it's doing. Right, well, anyway, it's a Mattel model, and like I said, it's a, a very chunky car. And I've not had it out of the box before as well, so this is sort of a, a, a review for myself as well, because uh, it's uh, one I've had a long time, but the, uh, the seals on the box have only just been broken, so, uh, yeah, there's no dust on this car, as of yet. So yeah, onto the model itself, we do a quick pan over over the car, so we just lift up and have a look around, so we go to the nose, you can see the nose is the typical Renault colour, very narrow nose as well, so we have a quick look over the top of the chassis, got the front suspension there, you've got Team Spirit on the car, instead of the uh, driver's name, got the driver in there, look over the top of the side pod, you've got the gills in the bodywork, much more pronounced gills, and they're much more uh, detailed as well, and we turn the car around, have a look at the rear of the bodywork, and like I said, the gills on the rear bodywork are much more pronounced as they were uh, than they were on the R24. These have actually been painted and detailed, so they actually stand out a bit more. So actually quite a nice bit of detailing there. So if I zoom out, you get a good profile of the car. So there's the R25 in all its glory at the back there. We just tip the back of the car up. You can see under the diffuser there. Quite a nice bit of detailing under there. The basic uh, Mattel model. We turn around to the other side. You can see all the living details there, all the chimneys, the wings, the exhausts and all things like that. Barge balls under the chassis there. And yeah, huge amounts of detail on this car. One of the better, definitely one of the better Mattel models as well. I know a lot of people give Mattel a lot of stick for their models, but uh, I have to give this one a definite uh, 9 out of 10 for their effort because it's an absolutely stunning model. The, the paint scheme is epic, the detailing is very nice and it's a very solid car as well. There's nothing on the car that's going to snap off. Uh, any given opportunity. I mean, these are quite flexy, so they're not going to snap off. I mean, if it was a Mattel model, it probably would have broken into about a thousand. Uh, I say a Mattel. If it's a Mini Champs, I should say these bits probably snap off just by looking at them. So, uh, hats off to Mattel for uh, the detailing. So, we look at look down into the cockpit there. When it focuses, so we've got the uh, dials on the steering wheel there. We've got Fernando sat in the car. So, we tip the car up again, and then you'll look in the cockpit and see Fernando sat there somewhere. So, there you go. You've got all the details there. All the transfers on the body there, nicely detailed. Little lines on the top of the chassis there. Carbon effect plastic uh, T cam there, and uh, yeah, whole lots of detailing there. Typical Mattel tyres though; they're not textured; they're just uh, black plastic, so there's no tread. Oh, well, there's a there's a there's a, a, a the groove tread, but there's no um scrubbed effect, so the tyres are brand new effectively. So uh, that's one of the issues there. So if we do a, a nose on view of the car, preferably there, so we've got the nose there, we've got the old Michelin man there. When it focuses, you've got the Michelin, oh, bloody hell, a focus then, right there we go, we've got the Michelin man there, focus that again, there we go, and then we just zoom out to give a nose profile of the car. You see how much the, the chassis narrows with that nose, you've got the light just, just uh, shining on it quite nicely there, and uh, it really does shine off quite nicely. So another look at underneath the car now, so do underneath. I've got all the uh, usual gubbins under here, we've got a bit more detail, we've got China with a, a symbol there, and we've got uh, Renault R25 under there, and you've got all the Mattel gubbins on the plank, you've got under the chassis there, and across to the diffuser, and uh, yeah, the diffuser has been moved forward I think. But I don't think Mattel really uh, did the detailing underneath all that well. Uh, for the uh, rules on the diffuser. The, the, the diffuser rules are a bit sketchy, I'm not all up on it, but I know the rear wing and the front wing were changed through 2005. The front wing is raised. The front, the bottom of the front wing, I think, is in line with the wheel nut. I'm not sure if it's... if I just turn it up, actually. The front wing... Yeah, it's roughly 
I was just below the wheel nut actually, so the front wing is quite high still. I'm not sure if it's meant to be in line with the wheel nut or in line with the bottom of the rear. I'm not sure how that is meant to work, but uh, there we go. But the rear wing has been moved forward. The rear wing is in line with the uh, rear axle, as you can see. The front of the rear, rear wing is on the axle line. So that's one of the rules. That's a rule that still stands today, although the rear wings are now taller and wider. I think it's a rule that was stand in 2017 as well, with the uh, rules being decided every day there. So um, it's... Uh, it's a sketchy one, that one as well, but uh, it's, a, it's a rule I'm not uh, overly a fan of, but I'm not overly um, against either. The rear wing, I prefer the rear wing to be further back, but uh, being where it is ain't a problem. It's just sort of a more retro look, if you know what I mean. But uh, the car itself, definitely a stunner, definitely one for the collection. You know, if it's you're collecting champions, then this is the definite one to go for. I mean, this is the Fernando Alonso model as well. Um, it's not overly expensive and it's not overly rare either. It's it's probably the more rare of the two because the Fizzy Keller model comes up, I think, a bit more uh, availability rather than the Alonso one. Um, and you tend to get this model as well that's been um, modified for tobacco advertising because you've got the team spirit on the car at the moment, but it should be uh, on the tobacco advertising. It should be mild seven. But uh, I've already explained this with the R24. There are decals available where you can, you know, just remove these decals and put the mild seven ones on. So. Um, it's something you can do. It's, it's a, I think it's a fairly easy one to do. I see a lot of people do it. I haven't got the balls to do it, so um, I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, because this thing will only go in a box and probably stay there for about a million years. So um, there we go. Uh, but yeah, there are decal sheets available where you can do all the modifications as well. Um, I think, was it 2005 as well, where they started introducing um, more elaborate De detailings as well with the decals when they were not at tobacco advertised races they used to go with uh, sort of uh, lines and um, sort of Chinese uh, symbols and things like that on the cart sort of uh, you know Chinese dragon and things like that it's sort of um, was it a Chinese dragon or a Chinese lion one of the two but it's sort of um, made the car a bit more um, exotic in livery um, it's basically only on the blue parts but uh, Definitely made the car look a bit more exotic. I'm not sure if it was 2005 they started that, but I know they definitely did that in 2006. And there are decal sheets available for them as well. I haven't got a clue how they go on the car because of uh, the detailing that goes on with it, but uh, they're, they are available and you can pick them up. Um, I'm just not sure if it was the R25 they went for. I know the R26 they did. Um, I'm going to have to look back through uh, the history of this car, but uh, there we go. It's um, one of those things. Um, but yeah, the, the availability of this car is, you know, it's pretty common. It's it's not overly expensive either. I think if you can, if you can get this car for about twenty pounds, I'm not sure what that, what that is in dollars and euros, but it's it's fairly cheap uh, for a for a, a detail model like this one. Um, I I picked this up about nine years ago, and I think I paid about twenty pounds for it at the time. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely one to get hold of. Um, it's fairly cheap. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, I, I would recommend this one. It's definitely definitely a keeper if you're going to get it. So if we do have another quick look around the car, and I will get the uh, the light pointed in the right direction. So we have a look over there, so you can get a good look at the blue. And uh, we have a look there. And we turn the car that way, and we have a bit of a look there. Oh shit, not the camera over. Oh no, I've broken the tripod. Where's the tripod? There. Right. That was not very professional, was it? Right, so we have a look. Look there, and we have a look at the blue. You can see the blue, how it shines in the light. And without the light, with the light. Without the light, with the light. And you can see how the blue is definitely a very nice blue. And uh, turn the car around again, back to where it was. And have a look at the car with the, the light shining on it. So it's, you know, the light here is not doing it justice, but uh, the light in my hand is doing it a bit better. So yeah, definitely one for the collection. And I would say recommend, oh, I definitely re recommend this model. Um, so yeah, it's uh, pretty much what I've got to say about it. I mean, the looks of it is uh, pretty much sells it for you. Um, and the Mattel box is basically a standard Mattel box. So I just grab the box here. And it's one of these boxes, you know, basic design like that. Um, so that's that. And uh, yeah. It's a standard Mattel box, and I put the light back on. So yeah, this is definitely a car I'd recommend. If you can't pick this one up, then well, if you're just a, 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 a casual collector like mine or like me, then you pick up anything. So um, if you can't pick up the R25, then the R24, and the R26, and the R23, and the R202 are available as well. So um, 
there are plenty available. But anyway, this is me signing off, logging off and disappearing, and I shall return with another review. It'll be the R26, either today, tomorrow, or the next day, but uh, we'll see. But anyway, this is me disappearing, and I shall be back as and when, so uh, bye for now.